please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. As promised, here's some more from N. Chandrasekharan's uh, Tata Sons chairman interview with Shireen Wan, where he is back to the group's operating structure, where Tata Trust's own majority stake in the holding company Tata Sons, which, remember, had become a bone of contention during the whole Cyrus mystery versus the Tata episode. Chandra has also made it quite clear that he does not see any issue with the current operating structure and went on to say that it offers enough flexibility to the group. In a wide-ranging interview, as I said, with Shireen, he spoke about almost all of some of the issues pertaining to the group, all the group's businesses, especially the steel and the IT verticals. Here's the big CNBC TV18 exclusive. How confident do you feel that the balance sheet repair process that you've started will be completed in this financial year and you are going to move towards stronger cash flows next year? I think we are well on our way. If you really look at it, the biggest one was uh, Tata Teleservices. That's, uh, uh, we are going through that process and the transaction has to conclude. Then uh, that will be done, hopefully, this year. Then we have uh, looked at Tata Steel, and Tata Steel, uh, we have uh, found a solution in the form of a joint venture in Europe. Mm -hmm. Again, that's in the works. That transaction has to conclude. And once that is done, some part of the debt will go away as part of the joint venture. Then we are focused on uh, expanding Tata Steel. Uh, we have already said that we want to double our capacity in India. Mm -hmm. So we have made a number of moves and you know everything. Uh, it's all in the media. Uh, <clears throat> then there is uh, some issues with uh, Tata Motors. That company is going about it. Tata Power is also addressing it. I think um, I must say that we must uh, be significantly better by the end of this year significantly better by the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll individually pick up on each of those points. And let me start by asking you about Tata Steel and two specific questions there on Tata Steel. Because yesterday we heard from Thyssen Group saying that they feel confident uh, of being able to conclude the process of putting that joint venture together, perhaps in the first half of the year. The due diligence process is also moving forward. Uh, so. A, things on track as far as the Thyssen Group joint venture is concerned, and B, uh, you know, the India opportunity for steel. Uh, you've looked at stressed assets. Bhushan Steel is one of the companies that Tata Steel is, has decided to pick up, and now you've got a battle in the steel business on between ArcelorMittal, uh, JSW, and, uh, and even somebody like Vedanta. So, you know, how is the steel business looking like uh, in India today? So I think on the uh, Thyssen Group, uh a joint venture. I, we are progressing it. We are uh, we are on track, I would say. Um, but nevertheless, you know, there is a process here to go through, and the number of steps in this whole thing. Uh, so we are pretty confident that we will uh, um, conclude it um, as per our uh, timelines. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, as part of the India steel business, country, it's a very attractive market. I think we have a huge. Uh, uh, expansion opportunities in India um, because the overall capacity is uh, around 75 million tons or whatever. I think it can uh, really double and triple in India given India's needs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have taken a call that we will do an organic expansion at our plant in Kalinganagar of 5 million tons and then a uh, couple of assets we have gone for. So with that, uh, our doubling the capacity plan will be on track if mm -hmm. you're able to conclude all these transactions successfully. With regard to competition, I think you need to do another interview, I think. Why another interview? I can, I can, I can get one comment in about the competitive landscape and the, the bitter battle no, that think, we're seeing uh, play think, out in uh, India. I, th I think, the, the, see, these are all new capacity. These are all not new capacities. They're, these are existing capacities. Yes. So. Whoever wins doesn't matter. It is why, the same why, uh, why did you not show any interest in SR Steel? No, I think we have our hands full with if we do these uh, transactions that I have talked about, um, our hands will be full for the time being. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that we can. It's not only a, a financial thing, also in terms of uh, execution, etc., our hands will be full. Okay. 
you know, the, the other two businesses that you, uh, that continue to drive the uh, growth for the group, uh, Tata Motors and, and TCS. Let me start by asking you about TCS because that is a, that is a company that, uh, that you've lived and breathed uh, while you've been at the Tatas. Uh, a, enjoying the fact that you don't uh, uh, have to sort of deliver on the quarterly numbers uh, quarter after quarter. In fact, you would have been doing, doing your boardroom uh, what, today or tomorrow if you were still at TCS. Enjoying the fact that you don't have that quarterly pressure and B, uh, what is the external environment looking like today as far as Indian IT is concerned? Uh, you know, the world reacts to every tweet that comes in from President Trump uh, and, and, uh, and that prove, is proving to be a bit of a constraint and a challenge, not just for Indian IT companies, but for the entire process of globalization. So what is the outlook for Indian IT? I think on the first question, I, uh, I've enjoyed my job every single day for the last 30 years. So I've enjoyed TCS, I enjoy, I'm enjoying my current job. So it's not a question of missing, uh, missing that or missing this. I think there is enough fun in, in, uh, in, in, in doing this job as much as I had fun at TCS. Um, with regard to IT industry, I have said that it's, uh, it's a great industry. It's going to be uh, uh, seeing enormous growth. I feel that the uh, uh, TCS definitely I can talk for. All the investments have been done in terms of um, how to operate in the new world, mm. which is uh, dominated by uh, AI, analytics, machine learning, deep learning, IoT, whatever you want to call it. Um, that throws up enormous opportunities because every company has to reinvent itself and you can see the order book that TCS has clocked in in the recent months. So I believe that um, the Indian industry growth story will continue. You believe that the mm. Indian growth story will continue, uh, yeah. will continue for yeah. the IT and sector? You know, I think the regulatory changes will happen all the time. Mm. That's fine. That's a cost of doing business. So every market in which you operate um, is uh, facing challenges. Okay, they have their own, uh, you call it uh, joblessness or you call it sure. uh, automation, you call it whatever. No, I understand. So those that, things will. No, I understand uh, that you're going to have to. It's not been new. It's not no, been it's new. not new, and, and you will have to, to sort of uh, keep pace with the changes in the regulatory environment. But what do you see as fundamentally changing or shifting for the Indian IT services model? I mean, offshore, near shore, all of that is now factored in how you deal with the, and cope with the visa restrictions, et cetera. But, you know, as we move forward, the era of 20% plus kind of margins which we've gotten used to for the Indian IT sector. Do you believe that that is likely to continue? What is, what is the outlook from a, from a business model perspective and what is the big shift that you see now? See, I have uh, said this and uh, many times, uh, a different, a, a different context I've said this. I think this business uh, has enormous potential and there is more software in everything. There is more software in financial services. There is more software in automobile. There is more software in manufacturing. There is more software in what have you. Mm. So the question of having a demand problem just simply doesn't exist. This structure where, where the Tata Trusts control Tata Sons, Tata Sons then controls subsidiary companies uh, like TCS and you know, so on and so forth. Do you believe that this operating structure is a structure that can continue in the future? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't believe that there is a need to review this, there is a need to tweak this? See, I mean, see you, you, anything can happen because you, you, tomorrow you feel that uh, changing this making an additional tweak. If it is helpful, you can always consider. But there's, I don't see any problem with the structure. There is a, a Tata Trust is a shareholder of Tata Sons, and Tata Sons runs all these operating companies. And uh, we can build new companies. We can work with the existing companies. Tomorrow, if you want to create a private equity, you can create a private equity. I mean, there's enough flexibility. You can do what you want to do, uh, as long as you follow the process and, and um, I don't see a problem with that. Well, and Chandra then, conversation with Shireen Bhan. Time now for a very short break, but uh, up next, uh, BJP leader and road transport minister Nitin Gadkari says the party will replicate 2014 performance in 2019 as well. Detailed interview on the other side.
Welcome back. Now, we are confident of replicating our 2014 election performance in 2019 as well. That's the word coming in from confident Nitin Gadkari. Now, the BJP leader and road transport minister spoke to CNBC TV 18 Shireen Bhan at the Hindustan Times and Mint Asia Leadership Summit in Singapore. Gadkari played down the threat posed by a potential third front or a federal front, which is essentially a congregation of regional parties. The minister said that they have only come together because the BJP is still quite strong. Take a look. What is, what is going to be the election call now as we head towards 2019? A, is there, is there a possibility that elections will be advanced? B, what do you make of the fact that regional parties seem to be coming together? My concentration is all on whole on my ministerial work. It sir, will not be appropriate sir, this, to make any uh, that's a that's a that's a pele pass, but I won't I won't let it I won't let you off. But the I'm hook telling so you easily, the one thing as, as a as a party leader that our government is very much committed for development, and uh, today also the presentation from Deputy Prime Minister. We need socio-economic transformation, eradication of property poverty. And our target is by our appropriate economic policies. We want to change the, all this situation in the country. And this politics for development and progress, mm. politics for eradication of poverty, politics of creating more employment potential, I feel that people will support us. And when we are strong, it is a natural reason that the small players, they organize unitedly. So it don't problem at a time, I remember, when at a time of election, at the media, the people, the leftist people, the socialist people, very much against Mr. Modi, against BJP, but we got elected. So I feel that I am confident that again 19, the people of India will again elect Modi ji as a prime minister and BJP as a government, and we will change the total scenario of the country because people have a lot of aspirations about the country, and they have confidence on Modi's leadership and the BJP's government. But do you feel confident of being able to replicate the numbers that you delivered in 2014? 100%, 100% we are confident that we will get good results. You replicate the numbers? 100%. Well, let's shift focus now to the horrific Katwa rape and murder case. The Supreme Court today took Suomoto cognizance of the conduct of the lawyers. The Apex Court today issued notices to the Jammu High Court Bar Association and the Katwa Bar Association for reportedly creating hurdles for the victim's family. The Supreme Court warned that access to justice cannot be impeded by lawyers. The court will now hear the case on the 19th of April. On to Uttar Pradesh now, BJP MLA Kuldeep Singh Senghar, one of the prime accused in the Unnao rape case, has been arrested by the CBI. This comes after the Allahabad High Court today questions Uttar Pradesh government and the CBI's role in handling the case. Meanwhile, we learn that two BJP ministers who backed the accused in the Katwa rape and murder case have resigned. They sent in their resignation to the state BJP president. As far as all that news is concerned, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has finally broken his silence on both these cases. Speaking at an event in Delhi today, Prime Minister Modi said that the culprits would not be spared and assured that justice would be delivered. हमारे स्वतंत्रता सेनानियों ने जिन्होंने अपनी जिंदगी इस देश के भविष्य के लिए बलिदान कर दी यह उनके बलिदान का पान है एक समाज के रूप में एक देश के रूप में हम सब इसके लिए शर्मशार है देश के किसी भी राज्य में किसी भी क्षेत्र में होने वाली ऐसी वारदातें हमारी मानवीय संवेदनाओं को जगजोर देती है मैं देश को विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूं कि कोई अपराधी बचेगा नहीं न्याय होगा और पूरा होगा उन बेटियों के साथ जो जुल्म हुआ है उन बेटियों को न्याय मिल के रहेगा so a statement finally coming in from the Prime Minister confirming that, yes, indeed, criminals will be uh, taken to their logical conclusion. There will be justice. That's the assurance coming in. Uh, let's move forward now with elections. Uh, the Karnataka polls are around the corner. And India Today, Karvi has come out with the first major opinion poll.
Now, the poll maps the state's mood and predicts Congress to be the frontrunner, emerging as the single largest party, but falling short of an absolute majority. BJP is set to be the runners-up, while Deva Gorda's JDS might emerge as the kingmaker in the state. Interestingly, the vote share numbers show that a close fight could be witnessed, as the gap between the two frontrunners is likely to be just 2%. Well, from Karnataka to the neighboring state of Andhra, Andhra Pradesh's Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu has no plans to enter national politics. Speaking at the Hindustan Times and Mint Asia Leadership Summit in Singapore, Naidu said that he wants to focus on making Andhra Pradesh a growth model that will be remembered in history. He also spoke on the ongoing controversy over tax devolution to states and said that penalizing progressive states will discourage efficiency of provincial governments. The southern states um, feel that they're not being treated properly. Um, what are your views on this? Anywhere in the world, progressive states or progressive provinces has to be encouraged so that competition will create. If you penalize progressive states, naturally, this is what you call efficiency will be controlled, all these problems will come. Do you see a national role for yourself going forward in India? I made it very clear. I want to produce a good model. If you see my state after bifurcation, 200 times bigger than Singapore. Population-wise, 10 times bigger than Singapore. If I can produce a good model that will be remembered in the history, I am working in that direction. I don't have any aspiration to go to national level. We are growing at the rate of 10.5% for the last four years. Now I am changing my gear. That is 13 to 15% I wanted to grow. I am confident we will grow 13 to 15% from now onwards, not one or two years, another 50, 15, 20 years. What I am requesting you, it is a wonderful time. I request all of you to come and see and witness what we are doing and then you invest in another place. Moving on now, it was day three of the Defence Expo in Chennai, which has brought together major international domestic defence manufacturers under the same roof. Jute Sunit spoke with the president of Larson & Tubro, Jayant Patel and Vivek Law of uh, Lockheed Martin on their defence deal pipeline. FICV, we still await. We, we expect it to be almost in the final stages mm -hmm. and should get closed out in a matter of a couple of months, as that's what is an indication. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we are one who are completely differentiated in building a FICV that's bottoms up mm -hmm. in terms of complete technologies which are homegrown indigenous. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised by the recent uh, news item that Musgaard Dock will come in. Mm -hmm. But Musgaard Dock is a submarine builder in the country, all mm -hmm. of us know. Mm -hmm. So is Larson Tubro. Mm -hmm. So two of us will compete. We have our partnership with Tata and we have talked to a whole host of companies, large uh, medium and small enterprises across the country. The F-16 Block 70 is part of the world's largest fighter ecosystem and in technologies on the F-16 Block 70 come from the latest uh, F-35 uh, as well as the F-22 uh, stealth aircraft. If India selects the F-16 Block 70, it's been flown by 25 air forces around the world and 3,000 plus F-16s are flying around the world. So this is a huge opportunity for product support. Well, from defense to the telecom space, Reliance Geo and Bharti Airtel are at it again. Bharti Airtel will carry a disclaimer on its latest set of advertisements offering live and free access to IPL coverage. Reliance Geo had contested before the Delhi High Court that Airtel's advertisement well, time now for a short break, but coming up next, we get you an exclusive interaction with the master blaster Sachin Tendulkar on what he thinks uh, of the IPL and whether or not it's a boon for international cricketers.
Welcome back. He's Bollywood's Mr. Perfectionist and has enjoyed stardom in India for more than two decades. But of late, his films have enthralled audiences in China as well. His last two releases, Dangal and Secret Superstar, have been roaring successes in the box office in China. Well, no points for guessing who we are talking about, of course. It's Amir Khan. And Amir Khan's stardom in China is no secret. Speaking at the Hindustan Times Mint Asia Leadership Summit in Singapore, Amir Khan gave all the credit to the Chinese audience for respecting his films and making it their own. He also ruled that there were not enough theatres in India when compared to China. Here's Amir Khan. Chinese President Xi apparently told Prime Minister Modi at a leadership summit in Kazakhstan that uh, he loved Dangal and he'd want more of that kind of cinema coming to China. Secret Superstar, a film of yours, where you're not even playing a lead, you play a cameo in that film, has already made 120 million US dollars at the Chinese box office. It's crazy. You, you've got to explain the phenomenon that you've become in this part of the world. Well, you know, actually, I don't know how to explain it because I had nothing to do with it, really. Uh, no, it's a fact. It's a fact. The, uh, if anyone is to get the credit, it's the audience in China. Uh, because they, uh, a film of mine that released earlier called Three Idiots became really popular in China, though it had not released here. So it got really popular, I guess, on pirated websites. Uh, and it went viral. And apparently, a lot of young kids and even parents saw Three Idiots, became very popular, very widely viewed. So we had nothing to do with it, you know. It's the Chinese people saw a film, they loved it, and they, you know, uh, gave it a lot of love and respect and made it their own. And then since then, they began um, looking for my films online and uh, were waiting for my new films to come. So all of this has happened as a result of the love that the Chinese audience has given to my work. In India, we're still talking about a movie making 100 crore or a 200 crore, and that's called like huge achievement. Um, over here, films are making 1,000 crores. Mm. Is, it, is it the difference in the sheer infrastructure? Is it, uh, is it, uh, how it's, do you explain it's, that? It's mainly infrastructure. I think just the number of theaters. So to give you an example, um, one of the biggest films in Hindi would release uh, typically in four and a half or five thousand screens. Yeah. Uh, and that's the total number of screens we have, by and large, for Hindi films. So the biggest films almost takes all the screens. Mm -hmm. In China, I believe you have 45,000 screens, almost 10 times that number. Okay. Um, in, in India, Dangal released in four and a half thousand screens. Mm -hmm. In China, Secret Superstar, in which I'm playing a cameo, yeah. released in 12,000 screens. So you can understand the difference. Now, the population is comparable between China and India. But if you just have that many more theaters and you have that much more reach, uh, then you will, the, the economics will change. Well, from one celebrity to the other, former Indian cricketer uh, Sachin Tendulkar feels that the Indian Premier League has not only helped domestic cricketers, but also helped international uh, players. Now, what is the philosophy behind this thought? Let's listen in to the little master himself. IPL has not only helped Indian cricket because uh, we felt that so many international cricketers will come and for 60 days they'll be spending time with our junior cricketers and they'll learn a lot of things from them. But simultaneously, what it has done is it has helped all cricketers around the world because when they come to India, they're not touring for the first time. The youngsters, like uh, I think uh, Darcy Shaw, he's, he's He's playing right now. He, he hasn't toured India yet. But after one season of IPL, having traveled all around India, having played on different surfaces, spent 60 days here, when you come the next time, which is his first tour, he's actually not coming here for the first time. He knows what to expect. He knows how the Indian surfaces is, are going to play. So overall, I feel you know IPL has added a lot to Indian cricket but also simultaneously international cricketers have benefited. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Business R+. But before we go, a quick roundup from the Commonwealth Games 2018. India today added three more goals to its kitty and continues to stay third in the medals tally with 17 goals, 11 silver and, uh, and that's 14 bronze medals. Wrestler Bajrang Punia secured gold in 65 kg category. Anish Banwala created history, becoming the youngest to bag a gold medal in the men's 25 meters pistol category. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Tejasvi Savant won gold 
in women's 50-meter rifle category.